Uh, we're going to hitchhike to Strasbourg. Here it says, uh, you know, it looks like police municipal, the French police, but it says Picole municipal. Picole, it means uh, a boozer, drinker, alcohol, wino. So I'm going to put on the t-shirt, or maybe I'll leave it like this. Uh, no, I'll put on the t-shirt. And here, there's the, there's the sign, motorway. Usually the cops, they don't know it, you know. And they say, well, you can't hitchhike on the motorway. But I'm standing in front of the shield. The motorway starts where the shield is. So legally, I'm all right. You, know? you have to think of all these things, you know, because the police don't know. There's the motorway. There's the mountains there, where I was at. Here I'm standing with my neat new t-shirt. Look at this, homie Ross here, with the backpack. I'm doing some hits, I hope you can see it. Yeah! Hey, okay, there we go. So, did you ask me some questions? Yes, yes, sure, yeah. To speak? So, you told, told me your grandfather was in Auschwitz. Yes. Um, father of my grandfather was a, a, a communist so the Nazi don't really like the communists so after the Jude they take all the communists to Auschwitz and my um, the, my grandfather and uh, his mother and his father was taken by the Nazi to go in Auschwitz for kill them in 1943 in the end of 1943 uh, so the father of my grandfather died in Auschwitz, but fortunately, I don't know because maybe he was a kid or something like that. Maybe, uh, maybe he was what? Because he was uh, young. Yeah. Uh, he transferred him somewhere and he, he survived until the the Soviet army come. Yeah. Uh, and after that, he go back. Uh, come back in France and he restart his life in the same city than was living before. So you, it, your grandfather died there? Uh, it, the father of my grandfather died uh, oh. in Auschwitz. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. So my grand-grandfather died in Auschwitz. Yeah. Oh, they were taken at the same time? Yeah, all, all family. Yeah, they call it Zippenhaft, yeah? Uh, yeah, maybe I... Yeah, I that's, what really the Nazi, that's what the Nazi did, you know, when you were not like obedient and be a yeah. communist or in the resistance, they took your whole family. Yeah, I know, the yeah. only know that the only thing that I know it when my grandfather, the, the only story that my grandfather told me it was like the train was too full, so they stopped in halfway and they uh, uh, scratched, they attached people like the husband and the wife together uh, in the top of um, um, a bridge. They kill one with the bullet, and the other one die by uh, drawing. Oh wow! Yeah. So the half of the fucking train, they kill people like that. Half of the train half were killed. Half of the train because oh. it was too full, and they, I don't know why exactly. He never explained me, and I don't think he, he know exactly why. But he told me that my other grandfather from my uh, father's side told me that um, when the when the Nazi come, uh, everybody leave. Only, uh, only him and his family stay for, for I don't know for, I don't know why. Maybe they don't want to leave his them uh, them house. Uh, the Nazi come and they catch many resistance. The first resistance, and they, how can I say, enterrer les gens vivants. Bury them. They bury them alive. Alive. Alive, yeah. Here in France? Yeah, in uh, Wolfling. Wolfling. In Wolfling? Not farm from Sargamin, yeah. Uh, they, in, in the Bicheland, it's where, where I come from, it's my region. Yeah. It's not from Prohem, it's between uh, Alsace, Strasbourg and uh, Sargamin. They, uh, in a little village, two young guys was fighting with the SS guy uh, when they, uh, they was in France in 1942, 43, I think. Uh, and they think there was resistance, so they come back with the Wehrmacht and they put all the village in the church and they burn the fucking church. No. Like 200 people died this day, something like in, that. In a place called Wölfing? Uh, no, in the other place, but not far from Wölfing, yeah. I, I don't remember the place, I think it's... Uh, uh, I don't want to say shit. 
Were you never here? Volmester, I think so. What? Something like that. Volmester. Volmester? Yep. Uh -huh. You never hear about it. Oh, they always talk about Oradour sur Glane, but never about... Uh, you have many crazy stories about the Nazi everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Because I travel around uh, all France, and I, sometimes you speak about the war, the Second World War. Yeah. And uh, when I tell some story about my region, Everywhere people have crazy story about that. that. That's crazy. That's fucking crazy. So his region is uh, Lorraine. It's Lothringen. Yep. Where they actually speak uh, German. Uh, and um, yep. in the war, it got a quite a bad reputation because the the men they were all forced to join the uh, the Wehrmacht and the SS and fight for the Germans. Uh, it was, and if uh, they wouldn't do this, the whole family would end up in a concentration camp. Yeah, so. so it's nice to hear another story of um, uh, um, some guys from Lorraine who actually were communists and they refused to go into the German army. So, so in, in honor of your grandfather, can you tell me his name? Uh, Camille. Camille Porté. Camille, come on? Porté. Forte? Porté. Porté? Uh, like uh, the door, like porte. Porté. Porté, okay. Yeah. P O R T E with a exactly. accent. Uh, Tout à fait. What was his, uh, what was his first name again? Camille. Camille Porté. Yes. Okay, so this is for the record people. A French guy who went to Auschwitz. Uh, and the name of your your grand grandfather who died there? Uh, I don't know him. Yeah, I okay. I don't know his name. Yeah, sure. I just know his family name. And your your so your grandmother she also went to Auschwitz uh, or no, you? No, 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 my grandmother was in uh, Algeria, in uh, yes. uh, Algeria. Algeria. Yes, she born and raised uh, in Algeria. So it was only your grandfather and your grand-grandfather who and were... And his wife, yeah. And his wife? Yes. So your grand-grandmother? Exactly. And she died there as well? Two, yeah. Uh, and what was her name? Uh, Nicole. Nicole. Yes. Also Porté? Yes. Nicole Porté. So this is for the record. And you see, well, you're not going to understand it, but I'm explaining it to you later because in YouTube there's certain words you cannot say. So okay. I'm, I, I'm going to talk about the jaywalkers and I'll explain you later what it is. So you see this jaywalkers with this thing you're talking about, like uh, the, um, the just amongst the nations, you know. You were believing so much in God and you were hoping God would, you know, save you all and all this and believing your, your, <clears throat> your religious leaders. I can't even pronounce that word either. So you didn't defend yourself. But you see, everyone was having problems in these times, the Europeans as well. So you can't just say, you know, the just amongst the people. This is a horrible thing, you know. It's, it's, it's almost racist, you know. It's like, like implying, you know, that um, that the Europeans only a couple of them were, were just, and the rest were not just because they didn't help you. But you know, you, you should take responsibility for your own life. You know, you can't just expect that the whole world is going to help you. Come on, come on, this is not right. You know. So you see, everybody was having problems. French people, communists, they also ended up in Auschwitz. And the whole church was burnt with 200 people in it, alive, children and everything. You can't say this, you should get it out, you know, like the just amongst the people. Just cut it out, you know, and stop this, you know, it's, it's, you're implying that the Europeans are bad people or something, you know, we're all, we're all victims of it. I, I lost my own grandfather, you know, so, so yeah, I'll explain that to you later. So, um, <clears throat> You, um, you were in Australia three years, that's where you learned English? Yeah, two and a half years, exactly. I was in Australia, I was in Melbourne first. I come with a working holiday uh, visa, like the backpacker visa. Oh, yeah. Working in the farm, making money. A backpacker visa? Yeah, it's, it's working holiday visa. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, between 18 and 30 years old for French people. Yeah. You can you can have a visa. You can ask for a visa. It's 250 dollar, and you can go in Australia and work. Uh, okay. Everywhere, and if you want to stay a second year, you have to do three months in the farm. You have to work three months in 
every every farm. Yeah. And if you want to stay a third year, you have to work six months in the farm in your second year. Okay. So. Oh, that's, I, that's bloody forced labor, mate. If an Australian comes to Europe, he yeah, doesn't have to do this. It's, uh, very, yes. it's trade, you know. Uh, it's, they're smart dudes, right? They, they give me, yeah, they're smart. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they give me job and money, and I can come in their country, and no one, yeah. no one make me noise, you know. And you told me you were that they were lazy, the Australians, you said. <laughs> I, maybe not all Australian, but the Australian that I meet was a bit lazy. Yeah. yeah, so they were happy to have some forced labor from France coming over. Uh, not, not, <laughs> not only France, but from everywhere, yeah. Oh, yeah, smart they smart like, bastards. They, they like uh, foreigner for make a uh, art job. Uh, you know, if the Aussies come to France, you know, oh, let's see the Eiffel Tower, let's go to the beach. They don't <laughs> have to do any forced labor. Well, they can try, oh. <laughs> but I don't think they want. Yeah. Well, thanks for the interview, mate. My pleasure. What is your name? My uh, I, I'm name is Zasha. What? Zasha with the Z. Yeah. Oh, he took me hitchhiking and he he, he stopped at a, at a as he is a, a former traveler or a, a backpacker himself. So he stopped at the at the difficult parts on the motorway. So really good guy. <laughs> Thanks you. very much, bro. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So when you were 15? Yeah, when I was 15. Uh, I see many films about uh, hitchhiking and <laughs> it's making uh, like uh, aventure uh, sets. And I live for two weeks, uh, I, I, I make a trip for two weeks to uh, Sargumin around Metz uh, to uh, Clermont Ferrand. And you were so, sleeping outside oh, everywhere? Yeah, I was sleeping outside. Sometimes I was sleeping inside the truck one time. Uh, I was sleeping. Uh, and the bridge, I, I sleep everywhere. I sleep in the in the center one time too because it was really cold the night <laughs> and really rainy. Um, but yeah, and I sleep uh, in the people house sometimes too. Uh, when I was uh, really uh, motivated, I knocked to the door and I asked, "Can I can I sleep in your house? Do you have some place?" And sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no. And I may meet many people like that. So it was my first travel, but I traveled around the France like that uh, until my eight, 18 years old, 19 years old. And after I catch the uh, driving license, <laughs> so I buy uh, a van, uh, but a really shitty van. So I just make, uh, I don't know, 10,000 kilometer with and he die. <laughs> and after that, I go in Australia. So oh, fantastic. Respect, bro. So he was only 15, traveling alone with his tent. Yes, when I started. Respect. Yeah. So I understand when he saw another backpacker like me, you know, he stopped, <laughs> you know, so I have to take this guy, you know, on the motorway. <laughs> Far out. Really good. Thank you. You're welcome.